Hello, my name is Ben. And my name is Chris. And you are tuning in, tuning in, do people tune in to the Too Vague podcast? Today's word is going to be, as we alluded to in the previous show, friendship. I don't think we alluded. I think we straight up said it. It was going to be friendship. Yeah. I don't think we heavily hinted that it was going to be friendship. I think you straight up said it's going to be friendship. Okay. Well, we'll have to go back to the... uh, We'll have to check with our show historian. Yeah, show uh, maybe Cheryl, look that up when you when you get a minute. Thank you. All right, Cheryl's on it. Okay, cool. Um, also, uh, a little bit of the uh, housekeeping from episode zero is we have um, we have some uh, some reader mail or oh. some so to speak some some uh, listener mail. Episode zero, and we've already got to do housekeeping. Yeah, this we've is... already got it. Yeah. Um, Basically, the we get uh, we will take your questions if you uh, write in and let us know, uh, you know, what questions you have. But only if you are my aunt. And yeah, in a section that we call questions from my aunt. Right, right. So this is this is a key component of the feature. Uh, wherever you are, if you want to send us in a question, uh, first take out your driver's license. Uh, and then look at it and see if uh, see if you are in fact Ben's aunt. Yes. Uh, if you are, great. Write down your question, send it in. Um, otherwise, you're not eligible. Yes. That's, and and that is not in all states. It doesn't <laughs> doesn't always say on your driver's license. So just make sure. Oh, how people will look forward to this bit every week. Oh, sure, yeah. they will. Yeah. Well, here's here's the first question from last episode. Oh wait, we've already got a question. Yeah, we've got a oh, question. Oh, I did. Okay, all right. The, the the question from last episode is: You talk about water levels. Are you talking about the level in the ocean? Mm. That's a great question, yeah. Ben Zant. Um It's uh, actually a game thing. Yeah, although you know, technically, she's not wrong uh, when we talk about the water level in the ocean. You know, if you're if you're Super Mario and it's World Three Nine or whatever, I don't know the Super Mario levels, whatever the ones in the Water World, then uh, you know that's the ocean for the world. So I guess she's right on that count. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that was. I mean, look, that's as compelling a five minutes of podcastery as you're ever going to hear, folks. <laughs> so I think. Uh, I think we should move on. I think we should. Probably we're we're going to hit. On. We're going to hit water level at we, some point. <laughs> we're going to hit it. We're going to hit it really hard. We're going to hit it head on. This is podcast one, baby. We got to get this thing into orbit. We got to figure this shit out. Yeah. Uh, Stuff. Sorry. This stuff. We got to figure this stuff out. (laughs) Okay. So. Or at least fix it in post. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, the word this week is friendship. So, Chris. What are your first thoughts when you think of friendship? Uh, when I think of friendship, just in the general sense, I think of a mutually beneficial relationship uh, in which both parties derive some sort of value uh, from the relationship they're in. Excellent. That's very analytical of you. Well, that's that's why you're paying me. Yep. For me, it's more of an emotional connection, I guess. It's... Maybe that's the, the maybe that's the beneficial beneficial part that you you know. That yeah, you say. yeah, absolutely. I um, think the emotional benefits is definitely the primary benefit, you know, in a true friendship. Right, right. And I think a, fr- a friendship is also something that you can um, revisit at any time. It's 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 kind of um, when it comes to me and friendships personally, I have few friends, but they're usually very deep understanding friendship kind mm-hmm. of situations where I can go to them whenever I need to. Mm-hmm. I can talk to them whenever we can, we can take long breaks of even years now yeah. and, and then reconnect and, and, and start things where they, and so it's that kind of connection that, that I see when I, when I think of a friendship. Oh, I, I agree. My, mine are very much the same. I am notorious for taking years long breaks you know, in friendships and relationships, because life gets in the way and people grow up and grow old, and you know, right. you got you got a bunch of other stuff. But I think with real friendships, that yeah, generally generally speaking, you're able to pick up where you left off without right. recriminations or anything like that. Yeah, and I think in spite of what uh, many uh, m- many cartoons will have you think, it's not magic. Ah, here we go. I was it's not. For it's not magic. Well, it is some kind of magic. Right. Strange magic. Strange magic. 
yeah. by ELO. Right. That's what it is. Uh, you know, it's it's tough, and everybody's got their own different criteria for friendship. Oh yeah, I, and I think it's sometimes it's used too uh, too commonly, or it's like a friendship is is I don't know. I I used to think about this how when people define something as hey they're my friend, mm-hmm. what is what does that actually mean, right? And to me, it means something that's very deep and emotional and kind of you know a little bit more beyond than what I. Th- think other people call a friendship it's like oh i know that guy right before i'm friends with that guy right whereas with me it's like you know well and your definition changes the older you get as well that's true there are people that i called friends in my 20s that i would not call friends today i would definitely call them acquaintances or even enemies right Right. enemies if you're listening don't even try it just don't and also anemones don't even try it water level don't even Water Don't even, level. They're so bad. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna. All I, of I think. Them. I mean, all of them. Well, let's hold hold that. Thought. Sorry, hold I that just, thought. You did this last, and I got all wound up, and I then. Know. Yeah. I know. Um. So, where did our friendship start? Uh, according to your recollection. According to my recollection, it started in the uh, smoking area uh, at our employer. At the time, uh, some 20-something years ago now, I think. Yep. Yeah, oh, 20-something. Yeah. Thanks. You're an old bitch. That's true. Um, yeah. And then uh, I think it probably started the same way. I mean, I I would venture to say that this podcast is probably not too far off from the conversations we were having in the smoking area. Correct. Yeah, yeah I would agree. And, I, and I, I seem to remember that the first, the thing that we connected on um and I w- at the time was a, I don't know, multiply pierced looking weird weirdo. I guess I don't want. I don't want to be. Uh, As opposed to the straight laced, square jawed person you are today. Correct. Right. Yes. Very straight laced. Ladies. Yes. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we the the, the thing I remember is Fletch quotes. Mm-hmm. So we just yeah. that's how we connected, which was very strange. It was just we started. Just passing the uh, the movie Fletch, mm-hmm. which of course, obviously, we were both big fans of. Right. We just started quoting Fletch quotes back and forth, and that's how our friendship kind of started. Yeah. No, I agree. Like you know, like most smug twenty-something white males, Fletch was a real touchstone for us. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I wish that weren't true, but it's true. No, it's true. It's yeah. totally true. And, and and there are a lot of other, um, you know, like a lot of people who who point to that movie as kind of one of their i mean like you know directors and, and things like comedy. it was a big deal of a movie i yeah. mean let's yeah. let's not forget it i mean you had michael ritchie yeah. directing it fresh off not fresh off but having done bad news bears right i'm sorry what were we talking about <laughs> <laughs> let's change the subject all right back, that's, that's back to uh friendship friendship um and then we kind of from there we went from uh uh, talking about our favorite music, yep. Um, we kind of we both enjoyed the cars, the cars, and uh, Hotes, Hotes, which is which is. Uh, uh, they know who Hotes is. We don't need to spell it out for them. We don't. M e t h o d o s l i p. Okay, all right. Um, um, yeah, music. And Tom Petty. Movies, Tom, Tom Petty. Petty. Yep, we both enjoyed David Tom Bowie. Petty. Yep, David Bowie. Yep. Uh, and uh, yeah, eighties movies. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, Ghostbusters. Oh uh, gosh, Caddy, Ghostbusters. Caddy yeah, Shack, Caddyshack vibes. Um, airplane, maybe. Airplane. Yep. Yep. That was a, a big one. Vacation. Zucker. Yep. Yep. And then, uh, then also we had a connection as far as video games were concerned. Because, That's right. Um, we would go to uh, and also trivia. Yep, bar trivia. Bar trivia. That was our that was our thing. Yeah, we went to the place that looked like it was it could have been uh, a barber shop. It's shenanigans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, shenanigans. <clears throat> TGI McScratchy Funland. Yep, yeah. exactly. No, it was good. So we yeah we started hanging out and uh, trivia, and then we went to video games, and then we uh, from there, and then uh, yeah, then what happened? Then we took a break. Yeah, we we took a break. We took a break, but uh, and I think I I went up going to California, but it was it, it's you went one to of those California. That, you went to Canada for a <clears> while. <throat> yep, yep. Um, and then I left uh, left the uh, the workplace. That's and, right. Yep. But um, but here we are again. Here we are again. 
uh, because friendship is a strange magic. And uh, through the through the strange magic, I just of... every time you say strange magic, I think that song. Strange, well, I, by ELO. I, well, I know. I mean, then you know. Hey, if you're listening, Jeff Lynn, mission accomplished. Yes. Um, Earworm. Right. So we're we're back together again through by virtue of us just. Gosh, when when did we start talking again? Why did we start talking? Michaela, go oh, because I got a job working with right. Yeah, right. A, a mutual friend of ours. And, yep. Uh, yep. And when when that happened, uh, well, actually, before we get into that, I wanted to nobody also nobody cares about our our personal history, do they, Ben? I think they might. Like, I mean, it give them. It, you know, here's the thing: it'll give them a perspective going forward when we talk about these things about um, how true. we interact with each other and how we give each other. Because I mean, some of the things that we say to each other, right. if you didn't think that we were friends, right, or didn't know that we were friends, you'd kind of like raise an eyebrow. Right. Kind of thing. Well, we are friends, and I sometimes raise an eyebrow. Yeah, but that's, you know. I mean. That's because you want to avoid facial paralysis. <laughs> this is true. You can exercise the face when you get older. This is, so uh, Eyebrow raises. Ready? Go. One, two, oh, three, yeah. that's, four. That's, 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 um, that's great radio right alco- there. <laughs> alcoholically speaking, I wanted to, think, I wanted to touch on that. that because that's, that's another one of those things where when I thought of you as being my co-host on this show mm-hmm. um just wanted to make sure it was recording that would have been horrible if it wasn't but anyway so when i thought of you or it, would it have been it totally uh, 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 I, don't I don't know man yeah keep going you said some very embarrassing things about strange magic i stand by all my comments on strange magic okay. i think it's a hell of an album okay yeah. I'll die on that hill. Okay, All right. I agree. I mean, I'm a big. I'm a big. Uh... It's got Mr. Blue Sky. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I believe is that is that the one that has their version of Rollover Beethoven? I don't know. I think so. Okay. I mean, anything that Jeff Lynne does, I mean, he always has his foot planted firmly in like that kind of '50s, '60s, like rock and roll is king. It's kind right. of like that. Right. Sort of feel, but it's not really. It's got kind of that. Yeah, it's yellow's good, man. Yeah. I agree. It's good. I agree. Anyway, this has been Dad Rock. Yes. Uh, this is Jimmy and the Weasel, your morning zoo crew. <laughs> I'm definitely Jesus. I'm definitely not Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and that kind of also, alcoholically speaking, we, we right. came up with in the smoking area we back did. in the day, we, we wanted to have our own talk show. So we fantasized. We were big fans of. Like probably David Letterman, Letterman is also another another person that we bonded over That's as far true. as appreciating his comedic stylings and just yep. random sort of um Yeah. Yeah, I think we had a shared appreciation for a lot of those sort of touchstones which just made the conversation that much easier. And yeah. and when you've got easy conversation with somebody, I think friendship is usually you know, pretty commonly follows thereon, you yeah. know, provided you're mentally on the same page with right. you know, general opinions and, and things like that. I would presume to know or, or even say if you and I were aligned on, on every political or social issue, right? But I know enough about you as a person to say that I'm comfortable with you being my friend, not yep. necessarily knowing that. Right, exactly, um, exactly. Uh, that said, if you're a Nazi, I'm leaving. Oh, okay. Okay. Just right. I can, let's be I can clear tell about you, that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I take the, not, uh, not since breakfast. I, I take the Indiana Jones stance on okay. Nazis. Right. So, you yeah. know. Uh, anyway, so my, fa- yeah. my face hasn't melted off recently, it's, so you, you, I think you're pretty safe. That's good. That's good. No, so I think yeah, shared interest in that kind of stuff. What about El- is, can we can we go back to alcoholically speaking? Because that was kind of like I don't know who came up with that idea. That was your idea, was it? It was definitely your idea. Um, yeah. and, and as with many of my ideas, I well, didn't want to be. The- well, I'll take that back. I think the talk show was your idea. Drinking was probably my idea. Right. Yeah. Right, and that was the part where. I, you know, I don't drink. Right. So, I mean, I drink liquids because I live in Arizona. It's a carbon-based life to. form. Yeah. 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 Speaking of which. Hmm. That's P- not going to be in Peabody there. Award, here we come. We're going <laughs> to get the, what is it, the ASMR people. All oh, that's true. Yeah, with yeah. everybody's got, got goosebumps Have over you- have you seen those things on a, a Twitch? I don't get it. I don't get I don't any of them. It. I don't get the whole ASMR thing. I don't get the goosebumps because somebody licked the 
Coke can or whatever the hell yeah. it is they do. They, I, I'm not judging. I'm just saying it's just an interesting sort no, of... No, I'm, I'm not judging either. I'm just saying I just flat out don't understand it. I mean, yeah. it's like magnetism. I just don't get it. Yeah, exactly. Right? I know it works. Yep. Don't ask me how. Right. Right. And so, Ben Zant, if you're listening uh, for next week's mail-in segment, if you want to mail in how magnetism works... Um, that would be great. I'd love to know. Yes. She was a teacher. Was she really? Yeah, math. God bless her. Algebra. Huh. Yeah. Um, alcoholically speaking, let's go back to that. Yeah, I, you keep, I, keep trying to go back to that, and I, I keep, I but keep it's diverting just, us. It, well, it, and that's the thing, too. I think there are parallels here, and that's one of the things I thought of when I uh, bribed you with flowers to be on my podcast was you come to my desk, you'd say, hey, Ben, we got to talk about the LDAPs. <laughs> Right. Which uh, is That's lightweight true. directory That's access true. protocol, but so other than true. that, I have no idea what it is. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I think you just said it all right there. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think at at its heart, I think it was a way for us to to give us an excuse to do more bantering, which I think we both enjoyed. Yeah, and which was, is obviously why we're here today to some extent. It was a stress release. It was a stress too. release. Yeah, and it was it was also. Uh, hang on. I keep thinking back to to when we were talking about alcoholically speaking, and and one phrase that we kept saying over and over again, which was. Remember your target audience. Right. right. Us. Us. Yeah. Yes, we were our target that, audience. Yeah, and that that's kind of... And that pretty much tells you everything you need to know about, about this podcast. About this podcast. Yes, yeah. it's... That is, we are... Ben and I are probably listening to this and thinking we're, we are the greatest podcasters of all time. Yeah. Uh, listener, if you've made it this far, please write in uh, because you're probably Ben's aunt. Do you remember the website we were going to create? About James Spader. <laughs> I remember Christopher Walken's cooking. Oh cooking my tips. gosh, that was so fun. I don't. I I remember something vaguely Spader esque, but yeah. I don't remember the details. Yeah, it was www.jamesspaderistrash.com. Right. Where um, <laughs> we both had the for the, no good we, reason. We, well, we, we it was we, just harmless amateurish character assassination. I, I think. Well, yeah, exactly. It, but it was just that. We couldn't come up with a movie where he was an excellent actor in. And then he does this. What is, what is the show that he does on television now where he's pretty good? Where it's Or that he did where the, he's the, the Blacklist? Yeah. Yeah. He's pretty good He was good that. in that. He yeah. was good in that. Well, and let's face it. 20 years ago, I had a much different opinion of James Spader than right. I do now. Right. Like, it I'm, like- it, I, I now am cognizant of the craft enough to the point where I can see him in something like Pretty in Pink and understand that. Oh, he's out acting literally everybody else in right. this movie. Or Ultron. Or uh... <laughs> No? Boy, you are just the king of the backhanded Listen, compliments, I, aren't you? Come on, man. He, I mean, was, he the... was okay as Ultron. He was okay. He was okay. Uh, no, I mean All right, I guess. What do you want? I mean, do you think he was better than okay? I thought he was okay. Less than okay. Well, then why was your Slightly. I just I don't know. I don't you seem it's, to disagree it, vehemently with me saying he was okay. So well, I mean, surely you're on some extreme. You're not you're not disagreeing vehemently with by me not saying he was okay enough. I think he was moderately neato. <laughs> I think that's what he was. <sighs> yeah, anyway, got a 15 so, year break. Yeah. But and then and also if you think 20 20 years ago, James Spader's um like his acting up into that point was what he, he you know the thing i remember him most from was mannequin boston legal boston legal yeah he was okay on that too it's okay in that yeah, yeah. Uh, i don't know why we just kept it. oh i think the, the i think it was stargate that, that kind stargate of, that's that was true. the one yeah, that was the one was, a lot of people seem to like that movie and i'm still not sure why yeah tastes like chicken <sighs> Not even. Yeah, I, that's tastes like space Egyptians. Yeah, that's very strange. I mean, it was just a weird film. Yeah, it should have been bigger than it was. Well, I mean, it, and yet it, at the same time, it was too big. It, well, that's the thing; it kind of was, right? And after after the movie, then you started having the television shows, and those kind of went wild that's for a true. while. That's true. The pop, they, they were definitely popular television. Well, yeah, popular in quotes. Right, but MacGyver was in it. Yeah, yeah. But anyway. Oh, yeah. We Another thing was um, 
comic books. You were a comic, big books. comic book guy. Yeah, you were you were a staunch defender of Alpha Flight. Yes, um, Canadian superheroes. You want to go ahead and give us give our readers the rundown on Alpha Flight for those who may not be familiar with. No, they can do research <laughs> just like I do. Nope, fuck them. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, go read your own I, listen, damn Alpha Flight. That's the thing too. It's like it, it, I don't want to. I don't want to poison their, you know, like if I say Canadian superheroes, I think naturally there's an eye roll that occurs with that right away, but it shouldn't. You should check it, check out Alpha Flight. It was a very, very, very much ahead of its time, I think. Um, it was it had, uh, John it, Byrne, right? Right, yeah. right. And um, featuring, at the time they didn't say it, but it was the one of the first uh, uh, openly gay superheroes, North Star. That's true. And he that's later true. went on to, and, and I think that's you know that's kind of a, a groundbreaking thing. Comics do even today. Is I like wonder they, how well that holds up. That whole uh, how they handled that. What do you mean? As far as his, as far as handling his sexuality in the comics, like I, I never actually read them uh-huh. at the time, so I don't know if they handled it you know appropriately. Which I, <sighs> I would be yeah. shocked, frankly. I, I if think they did. I think well they had well that's the thing too they had to kind of dance around it because they the uh, comics code and all that right well and also marvel he was written that way and he had his boyfriends who were around it, it was a part of the story so there was something okay. his his sister had multiple personalities aurora and she um there was her other personality that was you know the her, her one personality was really close to her brother, and her other personality didn't agree with the fact that he was gay. Basically, really, yeah. Wow. So there was like that kind of thing. So it, I, I oh. would say, from what I recall, it was handled well. But I haven't read okay. the original series in a long time. So, so we'll put a big sticker saying "read read at your own peril." Yeah. For potentially outdated tropes or or anything like that. Yeah, but I, but I, it was still that doesn't make it any less groundbreaking. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. Um, so anyway, comic books. Yeah, you were you were very much uh, champion of Alpha Flight. Yep, and um, you were a champion of Moon Knight. I was, I was, I was a big Bill Sienkiewicz fan. Uh, still am a big Bill Sienkiewicz fan. Uh, yeah, half half of these things that come out of your mouth as far as comics, mm-hmm. I have no idea who you're talking about. Uh, you would know I, you would know Sienkiewicz if you saw any of his art. Okay, yeah. all right. He did a lot of Daredevil. Okay, uh, in the Frank Miller. Uh, era oh, okay. a lot of covers gotcha uh did a lot of he's and yeah you, you'd know it if you see it i'll show you some examples after the show. okay um and that's the thing too with comic books I, my my whole thing was less about the artwork and more about the story mm-hmm. so whenever i would um i would want want even though i didn't read the comics i would talk about them with you being interested in the story and where it was going and things like that that's right um i'm a i'm a staunch believer in uh, the idea that there really are no spoilers. If it's if it's something worth reading or worth watching, mm-hmm. um, a plot point or two is not going to ruin that. But that's my opinion, and I respect others who don't think that. Um, but that's an interesting that's an interesting point of view, Ben. Yeah, I I mean I I think I agree with you. Yeah, like knowing the ending to Moby Dick doesn't make it any less shitty of a book right kidding <laughs> kidding it's an american classic just read movie dick um but you know yeah the story's good whether you know it's what's coming or not you know there's the visceral thrill and dawning realization and sort of the thrill of exploration the first time a, a particular plot twist unfolds um, but you but know, if that's what makes the thing, but if you're in that for that visceral thrill, then, you know, you you really kind of got to evaluate that separately from the work as a whole, I think. Right. Because, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I get, uh, maybe I it's know. more applicable to things like visual stuff. That, I, I, here's but... the thing. I appreciate the desire to have a story unfold without knowing beforehand what's going to happen. Like that to me is part of the joy of being told a story. Right. Is you're going on this journey, somebody's telling you a story, you you're unfolding things as they go along, and you don't know necessarily where you're going to going to end up. Right? That is in large part the enjoyment behind being told a story. It's it's why we tell stories, right? Right. 
So I totally get the desire to not know ahead of time what's going to happen. But on the same, well, not on the same hand, on the other hand, this is definitely a different hand. On the other hand, um, I think the overall quality of a story and whether it holds together as a narrative will do so upon repeated tellings if it's any good. Right, right. That's kind of, and that's sort of my, my, my perspective is is that too there's also some diversity in the way these things are revealed that sure you know, it shouldn't the linchpin shouldn't be one thing that makes this brilliant right you know right. like like ghost like the or not the movie what was it ghost not ghost, ghost. Um, no, no. <laughs> what the unchained melody wow what? right out of left field i don't good god almighty no uh, I'm talking about, uh, what is it? Uh, um, the one with, uh, Dirty Dancing. No, it wasn't Dirty uh, Dancing. Roadhouse. No. Um, the one where Bruce Willis the was. The Color Purple. The one where Bruce Willis was, was dead the entire time. The Sixth Sense. Sixth Sense. Got yeah. it. Yeah, in Sixth Sense, and I'm probably going to cut that whole part out, even though it's kind of funny that I had no idea what. You got to think of the ghost. listeners, then. You gotta, like, you've got to think of the listeners. Ugh. Yeah, but my brain works that way now that I'm older. <laughs> but anyway, it's um yeah, the sixth sense was one of those things where you know, it it's if that ruins the movie and you know, I I don't say it ruin you know, it's it's just kind of you, you notice you, you watch it from a different perspective, which is not bad. Right? If you know oh, yeah. that if you know that thing and that's maybe for for people who watch it again you know, it's a money making thing, right? It's like, oh, the big secrets are revealed. But then, if you watch it again, you're looking for all these things, and it's oh, just as enjoyable. As... That's absolutely legitimate. One of my favorite, you know, movies of all time. And it, here's a disclaimer: director is quite problematic. Uh, Brian Singer, The Usual Suspects. Yeah, that movie became even more fascinating to me after I'd seen it all the way through the first time. Right. Because like you said, now I can go through and kind of see where, where the, the gears in the plot are turning and why they're showing me what they're showing me and when they're showing it to me. Right. And I find that sort of study is that almost works on another meta level of studying the craft of screenwriting. Right. Right. And filmmaking. So yeah, I, I totally understand that can make repeated viewings richer, Right. but you know, if you were to tell me before I'd even seen it, what the big twist was in either of those movies, I'm not entirely sure I would have been excited to see them in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, where were we going with the friendship? I don't know. Are we going to talk about video games at any point? Oh yes. Video games. Yes. (laughs) Let's, let's, uh, (laughs) let's start with, uh, let's start with, uh, one of our favorite video games to trash, uh, which is also, which yes. Which is, is it really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about Kabuki I am Warriors. Down to clown. All right. Kabuki Up, named the worst game of 2002, by or me. I'm sorry, 2001 by GameSpot. And me. And you. Um, Kabuki Warriors was a fight game about the Japanese dance uh, drama. Uh, known as Kabuki. There you have it. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, yeah. It was a wonderful game. I mean... Very realistic. Whenever you hit people, coins pop out of them. Right. Which is something that happens in real life. Which is interesting because the entire point of Kabuki is it's... uh, I believe it actually translates into something like shadow play Uh or shadow dance or something, something of that nature. Uh, the whole intention, I believe, is to sort of mimic these things and these stories going on and not actually have them. You know, the intention is not to have real narratives in Kabuki theater, right? right. The whole point is that it's just kind of a show uh-huh. and that nothing is, is actually real. Um, certainly, I don't recall having coins pop out of any of the Kabuki players yeah, on that was... stage any time I've ever seen Kabuki theater. Right, which has been twice why did we bring this up for friendship because it was something we bonded over oh was trashing the okay game. i'm sorry i thought you were i thought you were going somewhere with, and the beautiful friendship between two of the kabuki warriors and i'm like i hope that's not where he's going because they just they just wanted those fucking coins out of each other man. yeah 
Yeah, and I don't know if you remember the game. Smell it. Do you remember the game? Oh, I remember the game. Okay. And, and what you would odor. do with those coins is you would travel from town to town right. to uh, fight and, I guess, absorb fighters into your troop. That's right. That's right. Uh, of Kabuki Warriors, uh, which were just... It was like a crappy version of Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, except without all the... Fun except, parts. Yeah, except without all the action. Right, right. <laughs> it was like one-on-one -on -one Dynasty Wars. Yeah, yeah. It Dynasty was, Warriors. It was so sorry. bad. It was so bad. So we definitely bonded over that. Um, but, you know, we also bonded over things like Gungrave. Oh, yeah. That was, that was, that was going to be my next one. Um, if you would... Uh, if, could you could just remind me what my mission briefing in Gungrave was? Yes. Kick their ass. That's right. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Every single stage of that game. That was your mission briefing. Right. Right. Uh, we also dinked around. We played some Crazy Taxi, I remember. Oh, yeah. We crazy Taxi some, was uh, good. played some Jet Set Radio. Oh. Uh, you, if you look over your shoulder, you'll see that I have my Dreamcast hooked up to that monitor. So you do. I do. So you do. So if you ever want to revisit Jet Set Jet Radio. Jet Set Radio. Yeah, and it's excellent soundtrack and. Yep, yeah. yep, that is a thing we could do. <laughs> do you want to do it right now? No, I do not. Okay, no, I do not. All right. But yeah, and just uh, speaking the lingo, so yeah, I think it's fair to say that our friendship was based in a number of pop culture touchstones and experiences, and. Yeah. You know, uh, certainly the fact that we were employed at the same place, so we had that in common as well. Right. Um, and you know, sometimes it's just, you know, chemistry. You just hit it off with somebody and realize you like talking to them and spending time with them. So, right. You know. Do they have anything to do with my bad impressions? Uh, no, no, no. I, in fact, you won me over with your Keith Richards impression. Yes. You know, yes. Which you can't do on the podcast. I can't do it. it. It requires a visual aid. Trust me. It kills. It's it kills. Your soul. Comedy. <laughs> kills comedy. It kills. Um, no, it's so, yeah, I mean, I think with that to put too fine a point on it, Ben and I have been friends now for over 20 years, I'd say, yep. you know, gaps notwithstanding. So right. we're very happy to be doing this. Uh, and hopefully you're going to find it entertaining yep. in the future. Oh, Hey, no, you mean not, not now. I mean, hopefully they find it entertaining now or they've checked out. I'm not sure I'd be a too. betting man on that, yeah. but Hey, do you want to hear my impression of, uh, you want to hear my impression of Bob Dylan if it is being attacked by bees? It's crazy. You want to hear it? I, why don't you ask the audience? Audience, do you want to hear my impression of Bob Dylan if he's being attacked by bees? Oh. Yes. Okay. Help, I'm being attacked by bees. Anyway, you know, 23 years was a hell of a run for our friendship. <laughs> and, you know, I know I've got no regrets. And they say it's time to walk away when you're on top. Um, and I think we just missed that by about 30 seconds. Yeah. But I'm kidding. Let's take it back to games. Let's take it back to games. Yeah. Um, so what are your thoughts on the way friendships are handled in games? Like relationship developing and things like that in games currently. It's to me, it's a lot about conversations, right? And that is the way you develop the quote unquote relationship. But they're usually pretty linear. There's not a lot of flexibility there. Yeah, I mean, obviously, RPGs probably give you the most leeway when it comes to that sort of thing. I, one of the one of the things that stood out to me was how rare. I think actual friendship is depicted in games. Um, I think a lot of games give you the opportunity to have what they call friendships. Right. Um, but I think most games tend to depict those as a one way street, right? You're, you make a friend with so-and-so so they can be in your adventuring party. So now you can, you know, cast magic spells or whatever. Right. There's not a lot of games don't really give you a sense that the other person is getting as much out of this friendship as you're getting from them. Right. Unless you're talking about something like um, like those Japanese um, like relationship uh, sort of simu like dating sims right. and things like that, where they have where the, and that, even those are really kind of a 
I'm going to whole... confess, I've never played them and I've never understood them. Okay. Yeah. It, it's, and, and not to, I mean, it's just, it's an interesting sort of thing that developed in their, um, just in, in the way that the, the a popular genre where I think it's sometimes in, sometime in the nineties when they started developing, there were, um, was it Atome? I think is what it's called, which is translated to maiden game where it was, it was designed for girls, a girl character finding a husband was basically the game Mm -hmm. was, it was a dating simulator and that. And then there was also a male counterpart where it was, you know, a guy finds himself and tries to woo girls by giving them things, Mm -hmm. um, giving them the right gifts and things like that, which is, I guess, Mm -hmm. I guess it's kind of a part of friendship, but not really. It's not like, you know, if you... I mean, there's no way to say what you just said without it sounding creepy. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. I, I mean, as from our point of, of view. Right. Um, I think, you know, not to, I don't, I don't know. I could see it as if there is a, a person who's not comfortable talking to people. Maybe that would be a thing. You know, like not. I don't know. I'm, I'm not thinking of something like the art of seduction, the video game no. or anything like that. <laughs> God forbid. But no, I get that. It just, it sounds like when you describe it that way, it sounds very transactional. Yeah. Oh it yeah. It sounds yeah. very and I think that's, transactional. Right. And I think that's, that's how else can you handle that in a game that makes it less transactional? Well, Cause that, there's a lot of things. No, like, I, I agree. But then that, that, that to me, that also begs the question, should we be handling stuff like that in the game? So if I walked up to you and had a big turnip over my head and was holding mm-hmm. a big turnip over my head and I gave it to you, would right. you think I'm trying to be friends with you? I mean, yes. Okay. Uh, it's it's either that or you're on the run from the turnip cops. Okay. All right. You ever play the Stardew Valley or any of those things? I, no. I don't think you would be that. You know, I didn't. Let me. Let me. All right. So this is this is a too vague learning moment. Dun, 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 dun. Too vague learning moment. I do not play farming games. I do not play any games with valley in the title. Okay. I generally do not play games with do in the title, and I do not play games where the goal is to just do your own thing. What uh, could you elaborate on that? Do your own thing. I don't like Animal Crossing and The Sims, and those kind of sandbox games. Like um, I'm not good with not having goals. Well, what about Legos? No, that's why I build model kits. Okay, so you're not even. So it's not like um, like Minecraft or anything like no. that. Though, like oh, those kind of sandbox. Minecraft. So no. sandba- sa- sandbox games are just not for you. They're not my bag, baby. Right. Yeah. And I think this is a. I think something like Animal Crossing and things like that, it's less of a, I don't know. It's a sandbox game, but it's also a way to express yourself to other people and it's social in that way. You know what I mean? It's kind of like. I don't. And I mean, please. And I'm, I'm legitimately asking for education on this. Like right. I do not see the appeal of Animal Crossing. Okay. I, ju- I just, I mean, and I'm, listen, I'm sure we have a listener out there. Period. No, I'm kidding. I'm sure we have <laughs> just listeners. One. Just one. Aunt Nora, <laughs> the odds thank are, you. The odds are thank with you. us. Thank you. We really appreciate your listening to Mathematically it. Mathematically speaking, there is a galaxy receiving this trend. I have never been good with sandbox game. Like, I, I see The Sims and I see, oh, make your own person. Right. Okay. What do I do with them? Oh, well, they go to work. Okay. I guess have- I'll make this person go to work. Oh, and you've got to build them a house. Okay, I'll build them. Oh, and have you got to feed them? Okay. Right. Well, and now they're sad because they haven't watched enough TV. Okay, so now I have to buy them a TV. Oh, no, no. You've got to get them to go to work so you can have money to buy them a TV. Right. At what point does this become a blissful escape from real life? Well, I mean, that's... Apart from the psychopaths who, like, trap a bunch of Sims in a burning house just yeah. to watch them, you I know, think... cannibalize each I think... other. <laughs> I think your 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 perspective is not the Sims, the more recent iterations of the Sims, because the first iterations of the Sims didn't appeal to you, so you just didn't. Because like something like the Sims Four started getting into territory, like being very very flexible with the way you could create your character to be various. You know, like um, 
using various gender pronouns and 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 having various relationships you can customize the way that they so interact that's, with each other. So and that's terrific. Like that. and, and I think, frankly, that should not just be the provenance of Sims games. I think I think gender fluidity and pronoun choice should be the standard across games. Agreed. That ask you to, to create a or, character. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I'm 100% in favor of that. And, and also, you know, ethnicities and things like absolutely. that. Absolutely. Right? 100%. Yeah. Um, let, let there be no mistake about that. Too vague is inclusive and supports inclusivity on all fronts. But the thing is, even after you've chosen your pronouns and, and made your person, what is the game? What are you doing? Well, you're basically, I mean, yeah, I guess then that's, you're simulating life. <laughs> you're simulating interactions. Are you, you starting to understand why I'm reticent no, 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 about I, paying $60 I, I totally, for this opportunity? I totally, I totally understand that. Okay. But okay. I mean, there, there are other gamification things where you're trying to figure out, oh, if I do this, what happens? I don't want to, you know, no, do I'm, this thing I'm, in real life. I mean, literally, I'm like, begging for examples of, of why no, no, people no, no, find I, this game fun. I just, right. I, I just can't. I'm really not being sarcastic. I, I just, I cannot wrap my brain around it. No. There's someone on on um, online who's done. There's a, a, a big community of people who play these these things, and they do. Some of them do things like creating the houses and sell the houses and stuff like that. As far as like you can move into these houses, it's it's gotten really big as far as the t- amount of customization. Like they build the house in the Sims and they sell the opportunity for other people to have their Sims move into the house that they built. Basically, yeah. They, there, there's a storefront thing. You can trade items, to trade things you build. Huh. Um, but there's also a thing where have you ever heard of the hundred baby challenge? <sighs> no, no. Okay, it's basically this is this is, is going to be an internet thing that I hate, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> there's there's a woman online. I think she's associated with BuzzFeed, uh, named Kelsey Impeachame, and she has been doing for you know for a, a show basically trying the hundred baby challenge and that's basically you have to have a hundred babies different parents it's there's a bunch of rules right it's like a challenge thing but it's not something that electronic arts put you know like hey this is a challenge it's just the community challenge like community comes up with a hey i bet you can't have a hundred babies with all these rules and people try this challenge and try to have a hundred children with different parents which not something you really want to do in real life <laughs> what do you have to say about that i'm uh, you remember what, what i'm saying what i'm remember? saying is there, okay. there, there are gamification things that no, you can I, do to I, like sure but i mean all the stuff is still like life stuff right yeah yeah well i mean sort of i mean there's things like they've, they've introduced like you know, um, mermen and aliens and things like that. But it's like, you know, for the most part, it's, 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 it's a sandbox. I think it, I think the issue with you, I mean, I guess this it game could... is just the sandbox problem. That's probably it. That's yeah. probably it. I mean, I need, I need something to work towards a goal, a story, a something, exactly. Something, you know, a you narrative. Know, exactly. Exactly. So just not my bag. Right. And, you know, as regards the hundred baby challenge. Yeah. Do you remember Five, six minutes ago before I'd ever heard of the 100 Baby Challenge. I miss those days. Yeah. That's all gonna, I'll say about it. Are you going to watch? Are That's... you going to watch your videos? No. You should check them out. No. They're pretty funny. No. Why would I watch a video of somebody doing something I don't want to do? Have 100 babies? <laughs> you don't want to do that? I, I Who don't. doesn't want to do that? So let me, let me, uh, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're, 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 we, we're doing clocking good? along. Well, I was just I I had an example because I I did a lot of prep for the show. Oh, excellent! Yeah, in just, my, and you did that in the last fifty minutes. In my that's official, excellent. yeah, that's great. Too vague notebook. Right, right. Get your merch. Um, I just wrote down some some quick examples that I think reflect um, really touching moments of friendship. Oh, okay. In video games that I've played and enjoyed. All right, excellent. Let's um, do that. And yeah. unfortunately, cool. you know, I think mo- I think my examples are, are pretty much story based. Again, that's kind of why I play games is is generally for the story. Right. But uh, you know, I think going back, the earliest one I can remember was probably Planetfall uh-huh. and Floyd the Robot. 
Um, oh, okay. The old Infocom text game, um, a touching first-person text adventure where you saved a planet and an alien civilization from being lost forever. Uh, and there was a touching robot named Floyd who kind of shadowed you throughout the game and who uh, gave his life at the end of the game. Spo- spoiler for a 50-year-old game. Right. Um, but that was that was very well written, very well done. The other uh, example that immediately springs to mind, Mass Effect 3. Um, there's a terrific scene near the end before shit pops off, uh, as we call it, the climax right. in the business, uh, where your shepherd is sitting with Garrus on the Citadel, um, and they're having, you know, sort of a last last night before the battle kind of moment. Last hurrah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they uh, challenge him to a sharpshooting competition. And you've got a moment, and I think this is the brilliant part of it, is there's a moment where... You have the choice as Shepard whether to outshoot Garrus or not. Right. And and it's a very stark choice because in that moment, if you've grown and played with this character, and Bioware did such a good job on, on the Garrus character overall, I think, that you really, I mean, it's a moment of decision. Like, do I let Garrus have his win right here, right now, before everything comes to a close? Right. Or do I, like, now, based on what I know about him, he'd disrespect me if I didn't give it 100%. So that the, those two moments stood out as some, some pretty genuine instances of friendship in right. video games that I've played. But those are illustrations of friendship, right? Those yeah. are illustrations of the bond that gets created as a part of the game. That's right. Actually building the friendship. That's right. So I don't, yeah. I don't know how to do that outside of a transaction is the thing. Like, if you ask well, me to arbitrarily this... raise your friendship score. Right. You know, I can either do that by giving you turnips yeah, or big turnips, <laughs> big, big ass turnips, folks. That's the key to the checkness heart. Yep. Uh, or I can do it by making story based decisions. Right. Right. And I would much rather do it with the story based decisions. Well, there's 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 a part that's dialogue. I think in that in that whole um, equation, there's a part that's doing things for someone above and beyond. It's not transactional per se, but it kind of is, where you're where you're you know. Like, you're given a choice whether or not to – it's not like do a mission for someone or not, although that's usually it. It's like, you know, the friendship is built because you do someone a solid. Right. But, I mean, there there could be things that are not um, dialogue related that will build a friendship meter that is, like, a thoughtful thing to do. You know what I mean? Like, I think you could put some things in there that would – maybe add to a narrative but if it's a if it's a game that's pretty linear uh, I, and, and i'm gonna call mass effect a linear game oh it's absolutely a linear game um because e- even though you have your choices about who to save who to this who to that it's pretty much it's the story they're telling from yeah beginning I mean, to end. yeah you're not it just yeah you know it just alters the story it's still a linear path it's right. not there's not your friendships at the beginning and your friendships are the end, at the ending are only based on your dialogue choices. Sure. Um, and of course, who but you, I would much who rather you decide, who you decide to sacrifice. Right. Right. Ashley. Intentionally or not. Ashley. Ashley. No. Ashley. Caden. Caden is a walking yawn. He's he's worthless. Yeah, but he's not a space racist. Neither is she. No, really. She's totally a space racist. She's not a. She's a reformed space racist mm, by the I end. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I trust that woman. Anyway. Anyway, this is, you know, one of, my point is I would just mad, I would rather the developer take the time to try and cloak the mechanic in something that I either don't know is going on. Right. Right. Or I, I don't realize it until the very end. Right. Like, oh, I could have made this choice and that choice. And this person would have gotten on the phone with me sooner rather than later. Right. Right. I think that's I think that's the key to to something like a friendship dy- dynamic is there are other and maybe this is the way it works in some stories and I just don't know because usually when I play through a story I play the story and then I move on to the next game. Right. Um even if there are 7000 different endings, mm-hmm. I don't always play all through through all 7000 of them. I'll occasionally I'll watch them, you know, like on YouTube or whatever. Uh-huh. And that's kind of cheating unless it's a, one of the uh, achievements and then I'll go through and actually do the the legwork. Uh-huh. Um and that's a different thing entirely, achievements and uh <sighs> yeah. Man. 
That's probably a word we can talk about. Man alive. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah, with achievements in video games. Yeah. Um, I hate them. Okay, well, hold that thought okay. because we'll, we'll, we'll cover it later. Because right. I think it's an interesting discussion. I agree. <clears throat> um, one other thing on friendship I want to raise before we call, call the fight or Say whatever. Goodnight. One thing I wanted to bring up uh, about friendship in video games mm. is Mortal Kombat. Now... <laughs> What? Uh, nothing. You know I, where, I didn't, you know I didn't, I didn't see this? that coming. I did not see that coming. Okay. One thing I think about when I think about friendship in video games is Mortal Kombat. And the reason I think about Mortal Kombat is in Mortal Kombat 2 and 3, they had a mechanic that they put in as a result of a big controversy, which was how bloody this arcade game was mm -hmm. and how violent it was when you had your finishing moves and so on. Which you look at nowadays and you go, <laughs> <laughs> what were we all so worked up about? Yeah. 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 Um, and friendships were put in there as basically a response to that. And That's they right. were kind of, you That's know, right. they're kind of lame. They were kind of cheesy. Like, you know, they were funny. Some of them. I mean, like Baraka holding out a present. Yeah. I mean, you know. But I will say this nobody in the arcade ever did the friendship move. Like nobody, there was no respect in the arcade for the friendship move. The friendship move was always something you did playing with no, while nobody was watching. Or, or your buddy you wanted to give crap to. I mean, I could see it's just kind of like, you know, kind of as a joke. Yeah. I, I, I saw, um, I saw an interview online with Ed Boone because newsflash friendships are back in Mortal Kombat 11. Oh. So, I would highly recommend you Wait, watch. There's how many Mortal Kombat's now? Uh, eleven. <laughs> Mortal Kombat eleven. Yes. Christ on a cracker! Isn't that right. isn't that free? My brother. I was talking to my brother about it the other day, and he was saying the same thing. He was like, "You know what? I can't really remember beyond beyond five. I I knew that there. Were, I mean, if you would have talked to me about it." 11 i couldn't have even thought of that i, I got just like yeah man i like for some reason like there are four arcades i can well i can remember up to up to three in the arcade right i remember right. mortal kombat 3 because that's when we got our jacks on right um and then oh actually jacks's jacks's friendship uh -huh. in mortal kombat 11 uh -huh. is amazing is it really yeah okay i'm gonna have to check that out you gotta check it out two words yeah jazz saxophone oh <gasps> So I remember up to three in the in the arcade, and then I remember at some point while I owned a PS3, there was a big to do about how Mortal Kombat was back, baby, and they released one of their versions, and it had like a crap ton of single player content in it, right? Which was awesome because right. you know I had pretty much given up on fighting games because. Everything was either hyper complicated bullshit like Marvel versus Capcom three, you know, where you needed to basically memorize the blueprints to a submarine in order to pull off some of these combo moves. Oh, do you want to take a moment and look over your shoulder to that Dreamcast machine over there? Okay. Yeah. If you ever want to play Marvel, Marvel versus, versus Capcom, Capcom three, three. Yeah. I got it over there. Anyway, continue. Sorry. Anyway, so, you know, where was I going with this, Ben? I apologize for generally. Basically, I've got, an enormous, I've got an enormous blind spot when it comes to Mortal Kombat. So the fact that there are 11 of these games now. Yeah. You know, despite having liked certain things like Injustice, that was, that was all right. Right. It was, it was a good right. time. Also Ed Boone and, and those folks. Yeah. 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 Um, but, you know, for me, I just can't play those games on. I'm just not young enough to play those games online against people oh yeah so if there's not a bunch of single player stuff to do I'm, or stories I'm or, yeah for me it's either stories or playing it with buddies right the only reason i have street fighter um the, the latest street fighter game uh is uh, i believe it's street fighter 5 arcade edition or something like that is because if i ever have buddies over and we like to play that kind of thing or if i ever have adam over if right. I ever adam wants to that's, that yeah. was like one of the games he played in the arcade and was pretty good at. Yeah. He was a Ken Masters guy. I was an E Honda man myself. Yeah. E Honda and Chun Li. Yeah. E Honda and his hundred hand pimp slap. Yeah. Is that what it is? Offic officially, I think it's called. <laughs> yeah. Didn't his, wasn't his level actually like in a Honda dealership? 
No, no. There was there was one that was in a that was a car like in a used car thing where okay. you beat up the car. But okay. no, his was actually in like a, a there was a sauna, and That's it was like right. a big That's mural, right. uh, you know, like interesting right. looking mural in the background. Right. Um, have you ever seen? Okay, so um, do you remember a character in Street Fighter uh, named uh, Balrog? Balrog. Yes, yeah. I do. He was the boxer. Yes. Right. Do you know the whole? story behind that whole thing there was there was a name switch that occurred no so m bison who is the evil guy right that's that's what balrog was okay balrog was vega and vega was m bison you follow sure <laughs> so they did a ma- name switch because they didn't want to call the one the character that looked like mike tyson uh-huh mike bison because they were afraid that in the U.S. they get sued, so they changed his name to. Wait Balrog. a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! I think you've buried the lead here. Are you telling me that the M in M Bison stands for Mike? Yes. Mike Bison. I... No, I don't think that's the. Are you fucking with me, Ben? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Look it up. If I had a nickel for every time Mike someone said that, Bison. Yeah, Mike Bison. They origin- and if you look online, there's a really cool video. This is just believable enough to be no, true. No, no, check it, check no, it out. No, I'm saying it's just believable enough to be true. Yeah, it is. It is true, I swear. Um, and then so someone um, online, you can find the video, where they did an interview with Mike Tyson, mm-hmm. and they talked about the Nintendo controversy and stuff. Right. But he had no idea that the Street Fighter character was based off of him. And they showed him a picture, and it was kind of like, it was kind of funny. Because wow. he had a really, you know, there was a Nintendo. I mean, I'm having trouble believing you. Yeah. Well, we can we can, we can can check that out no, during I'm, the break. Uh, yeah, during during the commercial break. The can. commercial. Well, it's not, uh, let me say, it's the end of the show. It's not a commercial break for you. It's a commercial break for us, because we're taking a break. And we're going to watch commercials. We're going to be friends. I don't know. No, we're just going to watch commercials. And, well, I'm just trying to tie it back into the theme of this episode, which was oh, friendship. You see, okay. you, you got to come full circle on these things, Ben. Okay. Well, see, this is why I have you here. Christ we forgot Christ. to tell the story. What story? The story about how I bribed you. Oh, yeah. No, that's you got it's like a season finale tease. You, you got to stretch that out. You got to you got to give the viewers an ar- overarching plot for them to follow breadcrumbs episode to episode. Okay. And then you pay that off at the end of the season. All right. So like right now they know about bribe. Right. So they know clearly I'm in it for for something other than friendship because you yeah. did bribe me to right. be here. Foliage. Um, yeah. So we're just going to leave it there. Right. We're going to leave it there and then we'll continue to drop hints as the season progresses. Hedge trimmers. He- now you're just saying words, <laughs> which I guess, you know, is pretty much the definition of talking. Correct. Yeah, it's... You are correct. Anyway, this has been episode number 11 <laughs> of Too of Vague. Too Vague. Friendship. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, we'll, we'll call that, we'll, we'll call it for the night. And I uh, want to say thank you for... Thank you for being a dedicated, dedicated listener to the show. Thank, thank you, Aunt Nora. Thank you, uh, Aunt Nora. You yes. Know, uh, th- we'd like to thank our special guests, Jeff Lynn and ELO. Correct. Uh, we would like to thank uh, The Sims um, and The 100 Baby Challenge. Yes. Uh, we'd also like to thank uh, Big Ass Turnips, uh, purveyors of Big Ass Turnips for all your Big Ass Turnip needs. Show someone you're their friend today with a Big Ass Turnip. Okay, well, thank you for joining us. My name is Ben. My name is Chris. Bye now. Bye.